So this week we are starting to make our stove for our dollhouse kitchen. Stay tuned and see how easy this is to put together. All right, we're gonna start assembling the basically the body of our stove. The only thing that's gonna open in the stove, by the way, will be the door going into the oven. The rest, the little drawer at the bottom is a fake drawer. So we're, since this, is, this project has all been done with foam core and cardboard, paperboard, that kind of thing, we're sticking with that theme here. We have a piece of foam core that is two and three fourths of an inch wide by four inches tall. The dimensions for all of these pieces will be in the blog post, so don't worry, you don't have to take notes. The second piece of foam core that we're using right now is two and three fourths by one and three fourths. So this is the bottom, that's what I'm calling it right now. Then I have two side pieces cut from paperboard. Specifically, I am using a Bisquick box because Bisquick boxes are quite a bit heavier than say a cereal box or a cracker box. Use the heaviest of that type of box you've got. And I've got two of these that cut two and three fourths by two inches. So let's get started with this. We are going to put this on here so that it lines up. And again, we are. I'm gonna put my dimensions outside so that I can uh, be sure that I have them available when I go to write down my sizes. All right. And make sure that you've lined everything up. We're going to be using our pins again, just like we always do. There will be a base underneath this, just like there was on the refrigerator. So that will go on later. This is just going to be kind of like the bottom of our fake drawer. Okay. And I'm going to use this piece of craft stick I have today to push these pins in. All right, so we make sure you have a nice corner there. Now these two pieces are going to glue right here. We are going to be gluing. Come on, glue. Did I get up high enough? I'm going to put a little glue here just to make sure I reach the top of my side. And I always glue with the, the side that the labeling from the box was towards the inside of my project. That way, if it should show that way it'll be covered um, even the inside of the the oven part will we won't be seeing this piece and just double check that I've got all the way to the edge And just to make sure that these are held, I'm going to be putting some pins in them. I may have to do this off camera because I may have to, uh... there we go. Protect your finger when you're poking into the um, paperboard. It's, it is a lot harder. And make sure that you're staying straight. So I'm going to put pins in the other side and then I'm going to let this glue dry and when this glue is pretty dry I'll come back and we'll move to our next step. All right so the glue has started to dry here it's not completely dry but we are going to cover our sides with some white cardstock. Same white cardstock we've been using all along in our project. And this is cut four inches by three inches. Once again, the size will be in the blog post. Now I'm going to, I recommend you don't write your dimensions on the outside of yours. 
I simply did that so I'd remember for the video. Hopefully it won't bleed through. I'm out of the glue stick that uh, is purple, so I'm having to use just a regular one. Kind of put it on there so that you've got some on each side. And we're going to do some trimming and some scoring and such once this this batch of glue is pretty much dry. I'm going to get that. Now, that glue needs to dry so that we'll be able to uh, fold that over without moving it around. All right, so the glue's had time to dry, and I did one off camera so I could figure out exactly what I'm doing before I start. So, we are going to cut out straight out from the bottom towards the back, and then we're going to cut an angle this way. And we are going to cut out straight up and out like that. We're going to cut like that and like that. And then turn it over. First we need to cut here. <laughs> And once you see how this folds, it'll make more sense why I'm cutting where I am. Then that piece goes away. All right. Then kind of fold all these pieces in right against that cardboard. And cut this part off at an angle. All of these ends that we're folding in, those are all going to be covered later. So we don't need to worry about having those ends look great. We just need to get the edges covered. So now our glue stick. And that's why I'm using glue stick on this, because it's going to have something else glued over it. Let's put that in. Oops. First, let's get this one glued in. I like the front in first and then the top down over it. So we've got a nice line there. Then this one can go up over the bottom and this can go along the back. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've simply got this parchment paper here to protect my work surface from the glue. All right, now I have another piece of foam cord that's cut one inch by two and five eighths of an inch. Again, the, the measurements will all be on the blog post. And this one, and then we have a piece of paper two inches by four inches. Plenty of glue on the front. We're going to do that. And we're going to cut and then you'll notice I'm not cutting this all the way to the corners I'm cutting it so that it's got a little bit hanging past. We'll trim it after the glue dries. We're going to glue up these first two sides. Oops, I'm going to tape around so I don't get this all over my table. I do that because I don't want to have to stop and clean up glue in between steps. Now I'm going to have a clean spot on my paper. I'm going to set this down and I'm actually going to set a bottle of Mod Podge on it to keep it flat. And I'm going to let that glue stick dry oh, for about 10-15 minutes and then I'll be back. 
All right, so this glue is kind of dry. So we're going to kind of trim this up. I'm leaving a little bit at the very ends. I'm just trimming off what's on the back so that I can kind of mush that in. And this one I think I'm actually going to use the, uh, the tacky glue for because I want it to really hold. It's not going to show when we're done, but it's not going to necessarily have anything right against the back. Now, put that down on my parchment paper because parchment paper is a non-stick surface. Put the bottle of Mod Podge on it and let that dry for a few minutes. All right, so now that glue is dry, so we're going to trim back this. The only thing it's going to show is going to be the front on this piece. So we just want nice looking corners. All right, now. This now gets glued in here, and we can't put pins in it because we are going to uh, be able to, we have our finished edges now. So we're going to put glue, make sure I'm under camera. And I'm going up further than I need to, and then I'll just wipe the extra glue off. All right, now we want this glue to dry completely before we go to our next step. So when this is dry, I'll be back. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we've got this little skinny piece of foam core. This is where our controls are going to be for our stove. And it's just a piece that's two and three-fourths of an inch wide by three-eighths of an inch tall. I thought about angling it, but I thought that would be very difficult to get right and get it straight. So I'm just going to make mine kind of squared off up here. And we're going to glue this on. And this also will need to be dry before we can go on to, and do too much more. So we're going to let that glue dry. And when that's pretty much dry, we'll start working on getting the inside box built for our oven. All right, so now we're going to build our oven, or what will become our oven. So to start out, I have four pieces of foam core cut here. These two pieces are the top and the bottom of our oven, and they are two and five eighths by one and three fourths. These two pieces of foam core are, foam core are the sides. They are one and three fourths by one and a quarter. The measurements will be in the blog post. One thing I recommend you do, go ahead and cut these. And they go with the, the top and bottom overlap the sides. Pin them together and fit them in your oven or in your space to make sure they fit. I had to adjust mine to make them fit. So make sure that you've got yours cut exactly the size you want. After they're cut correctly, cut a piece of gray cardstock. And this gray cardstock is what our inside of our oven will be finished with. It's going to be a gray interior. And I've got a cat hair hanging here and I don't know where it is. I can see the shadow of it. So I'm gluing these down. Right against the back edge. I figured rather than cut four pieces of cardstock exactly the size I needed. It would be much easier to cut a strip, glue them on, and then cut them to size. 
I'm all about making this as easy for you as possible. That's why this whole kitchen project has been made with materials that are easy to work with without, you know, big fancy tools, no power tools needed. And it's things that you can get, for the most part, at the regular craft store. Make sure you leave yourself enough room. This one's crooked. It's okay if they're crooked, as long as it comes to, and maybe even have a little bit at the back, so you can cut two sides. This one also, so there's a little bit of leaf space, and set that aside aside to dry. Then I have another piece of cardstock, and this one is cut. Oops, it has a corner there. This is cut to fill in this space. I got a little too tall. Actually. So we're going to put that in there, just like that. Oops, using which side do I have showing? Okay, this is a textured cardstock. It's the only cardstock I had in gray. And for some reason, oh, I know, I threw away my sheet of parchment paper the other day. I don't want to run this on my uh, on my work surface. I don't want to get the glue stick all over my work surface. I'll have to get a piece of parchment paper before I come back for the next step. Let's stick this in here and cover it. can be covered all the way to the bottom because that's never going to show. Now these need to dry and then we're going to cover the back of our stove next. But this needs to dry first. Alright, now this glue has dried so we are going to very carefully cut the paper off along the edges. We're leaving oops, this side long. Oops. It's okay if you get a little into the spot as long as you don't cut off too much. Now, I also want it flush with the back. Now, we're going to fold along that edge on all of them. Whoops. And I'm going to use tacky glue on this because we're gluing onto the open foam here. It'll fold away a little bit, that's okay. I'll push it back once the um, the glue gets tacky. I should have put down my parchment paper, I forgot to bring it. Oh well, all right. So those all need to get glued down. You'll have to kind of hold them. If you have something to clamp them with, that would be awesome. I don't think I do right now. So I will, off camera, I will, um, be holding those so that they stay glued. Now we have this odd shaped piece of paper. It's two and a half inches this way by four inches this way. And then I went in three-fourths of an inch on each side on this edge and cut away a quarter inch. This is so it will fit 
into there. And then I figured out where my control panel ended and I put a nice crease there. I'm also going to add just a little bit of a bead of glue right in that corner. And I want this glue to dry before I try to do any more folding. So this needs to sit. These will need to be held in place and uh, till the glue sets. And when those are done, I'll be back and we can move on to the next steps. All right, so this glue is pretty much dry. So now we are going to just do a really small part because this also needs to be all set up before we can bend the edges back. So just a little glue stick there and push this down. And then when I come back, we'll fold to the back. And I did manage to tear my paper there, but I don't think it's going to show too bad. So this needs to get uh, folded or dried now. And when this is dry, we will start wrapping it around the back. All right, so now that this glue is dry, we are going to take our scissors and cut carefully at those points where it bends. Start with this. We'll start by doing this one. And this is going to go back to the back. Now you want the sides to be pretty neat, but the back can be kind of sloppy. That's okay. Now, I also want to cut there. So wherever you've got a bend in the paper on the front, here, this one is going to come up the part that goes on that bottom part of that control panel area. That will come up. And then this one. And really the only thing that's doing is it's covering up that bottom edge. Now this part from the front of the control panel comes back. Oops, I haven't cut it on this side. Just carry your fold out. We're just wrapping this kind of like you would wrap a package. Like I said, it's okay if it's a little messy on the back side because that's not going to show. And then I got to refill this glue soon. All right, I'm pull that down. And this, in theory, should hold everything in. And what I'm going to do, I actually have some push pins here. They were from another project. Just use something to hold that. This edge is going to get covered anyway. Don't push through just enough to hold that paper down and let that dry. And then we'll trim it when it's dry and probably should get off some of that glue. Just take something. I've got this edge of a piece of foam core. And if it's not as neat as we would like when we're done, we can always do a little patching when we're done, when it's all dry. So I'm going to let that glue dry, and then I'll be back. All right, so now what we need to do, first we need to take these little push pins off. These worked really well. They uh, kept everything right where we needed it. Are we going to need to go down? I think we're fine. I'm going to cut this off. 
nice and even. And if we decide we need to add more to that later, we can, but I think it'll be fine. Let's turn that nice and close. You don't want to see any of the um, stuff that's folded over from the front. All right, so that's all trimmed up. Now, we are going to first trim off the extra paper that comes past the fronts. Remember parchment paper. Let's get these glued together. Now make sure that these edges that are covered are all facing the same way. And that the, um, the gray is to the inside. So, like this. Let's get some glue. Oops. There we go. And we're going to line this up. going to, as normal, push our pins through. This just makes it a lot stronger and it keeps it nice and square while the glue is drying. Make sure you have no pins showing and wipe away any excess glue. And we're going to do all four corners at once while the glue is still dry. Making sure we have everything lined up. So while the glue is still dry, we can adjust our pins and make sure everything is right. Come on. Oops, that went through. That's why it didn't want to go. I'll push it through. I'll get that in a little later. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, putting this one here. And then when this glue is dry, I'll be back and we can insert our oven in, our oven to our stove. All right, so my glue has partially dried, but this is still loose enough that I can move it around. Very carefully, you want to dry fit this in. You're going to need to get it so it will go down about like this, just a little bit here. And you want to be down probably an eighth of an inch from the top of the stove that will allow us a space for our cooktop. And since it's still a little loose, uh, you'll need to be careful that you don't um, tear this apart. Now, I'm going to put some glue on the sides. And by the way, I did need to trim just a hair off of the back. I just used my knife and just very carefully cut just a little bit because it was a little too tight to fit behind here. So now, a little glue. And this doesn't need to be a solid gluing. It's just some on each side. And then, making sure you have this the right way. Not that far. You're going to want to make sure this line is straight and make sure that you have the same amount pretty much on both, th both sides. And then that glue needs to dry. And that's as far as we're going to go today because 
this video is getting kind of long I don't want to get too long and also I want this glue to have plenty of time to dry before I film again and I need to get this video edited for you so oops, be sure and check the blog post for photos and I will try to uh, elaborate on some of the problems that I may have run into also I'll have a list of the cut sizes of all the pieces also be sure and check the Facebook page it's where I keep in touch with you guys and let you know what's going on usually and if you'd like to help make my videos better be sure and check the patreon page the link is in the description box then you can get your name at the end of the video like these wonderful folks I'll talk to you later bye <music>